Well, good morning again, everybody. Dave Nemo with you. Michael Burns here. And uh, we are celebrating along with, um, well, you know what? I, I, 5,600. Run some numbers with me, uh, Tom Ostergaard. Um, and welcome back. Because um, um, the number's a little bit big for me here. Uh, how many people are, are with the company? Well, Dave, total, we have total associates across the country of about 6,000 between our drivers, our our technical staff, our shop maintenance team, and you know our operations crew and our terminal support staff all around the country. So we got a great organization, and, and we're very proud of everybody across the country. You know what? There may be a little slogan here from six to six thousand. Started in 1966 with six trucks and now 6,000 yeah. folks. And one of them is sitting right here, uh, uh, Winston Ostergaard. Yeah. And uh, that name is not a coincidence, yeah. right? No, no, Dave, it's, it's not. And we're really proud to have Winston back uh, working with the company. Um, I'll let him share a little bit of his history. But after college, Winston worked outside the industry and, and has been back with us a little over two years ago. So we're really happy to have him. Well, it's great to meet you, Winston, and uh, you guys are doing something. We were kidding around about this a little bit before we went on the air, Ton. You guys are uh, doing what we are doing. We are defying logic by doing business with family and friends. Uh, Dave Nemo Entertainment is a small, very tiny, but family company. Uh, you guys are, are a family-owned company and uh, a private company, and, and that really means a lot in, in today's not just economy, but society, Winston, I, th I think. Yeah, it does. It's actually uh, it's fantastic working um, in the family business. The foundation that uh, Dwayne of Ton have laid over the last 50 years for all employees, um, you know, is a solid one. And uh, it's really fun to be back in the family business um, and interacting with all the employees here and across the country. You know, Dave, I think having Winston here is, is a tremendous vote of confidence for the rest of the organization because they know that there is um, there's succession in place. They know we've got a uh, transition that's that's occurring that, that ensures their success and ensures their opportunities for years to come. So I think having Winston and uh, the rest of the family involved is, is very reassuring to the rest of our teammates that we're in good hands for many, many years to come. Indeed. Um, you know... It, um, it in my own radio career, and I'll just say this very briefly, but there's a point to be made. Um, from the year uh, 1991 to 2000, in that nine-year period, I worked for doing the same job, but I worked for 11 different companies, one of them for one day. And every one of those people who bought us said, we're in it for the long haul. And you get to understand pretty quickly that that really doesn't mean anything. But you guys take that coin and flip it right on over. And it's got to mean a lot to the 6,000 people here and to make that understanding that, yeah, uh, in, in so many businesses in, in the country now and for the last 30 or 40 years even, but certainly most recently, you never uncertainty was something that we talked a lot about uh, with um, Ryan Allington in terms of sales. You know, the, the uh, marketplace is uncertain. When you can take that uncertainty out of the, out of the equation, uh, that really means a lot on every, in every aspect. Yeah, and Winston's had some good experience. Winston, why don't you share a little bit of your history, um, even early days here at Crete? Sure. I, uh, I started out here um, back in high school, uh, probably just recently turned 16, and uh, worked in the summers um, in the Tire Bay with uh, my good friend John Reese. And uh, we spent the summers um, working out in the Tire Bay. Uh, kind of funny. Um, back in those days, I was probably uh, 120 pounds, so a mounted tire um, on a rim aired up. I don't know how much exactly that weighs, but it probably outweighed me. So uh, every evening coming home, I was absolutely exhausted uh, working on those tires all day long. But it was a good experience. Met a lot of nice people, and uh, it's fun to go down to the shop still today. Um, and see a lot of those people that are still down there. The uh, we we talked about um, with Morris earlier about the uh, presentation of the uh, 50th anniversary tractor trailer, the one he's going to do the 50th anniversary trip with Alpo down to Baton Rouge. I think he's leaving today, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, and um, I, I understand that you had uh, some really touching 
if that's a good word, things to say. And I thought maybe you might want to uh, repeat some of that here because I think it pertains, um, obviously, to Crete. But it might be something that uh, the folks out there listening at large might want to take to heart. Sure. And I, I briefly touched on that a minute ago. But um, kind of uh, what I had to say on Saturday was the, the foundation that Dwayne and Ton have laid for all employees uh, is a solid one built on you know integrity and determination. Um, and that really resonates um, throughout the company, um, and that has kind of been our uh, focus for the last 50 years and will be our inspiration for the next 50 years. That mindset is really uh, uh, something that's set us apart from our competition. You know, Dave, I'm proud of the fact that Winston also has his CDL. Um, Winston and, and my wife, his mom, Holly, are the only two members of the family with the CDL, so... Uh, for those drivers out there, you've got Winston and Holly who, who at least have experienced a little bit of that on-road experience. Yeah, well, you beat me because I don't have one. <laughs> but uh, Michael Burns does, that's for sure. And uh, uh, it, it's interesting, though, that um, having said that, um, folks do the job that they do here very well. And some of them haven't even been in a truck. And you wonder, how is that possible? But it is possible, and you guys prove that. You do the job that you do to enable the other person to do the job that they do. And there's that chain of connection and uh, that chain of responsibility that uh, remains unbroken or should remain unbroken. Well, it's teamwork. It's Mm -hmm. teamwork that's built around a high level of trust, a high level of respect. And so everybody knows their role and everybody knows how their role fits together like a piece of the puzzle so that collectively everybody supports each other, helps each other, and and, uh, gets the job done working together together. Um, and that, that's the key. Tim Ashoff is with us on, on the uh, radio with us uh, for a short segment uh, every month, and we talk about some of the things in trucking, you know, compliance and safety and all, all of the stuff that comes up in, in general talk. But one of the things uh, early on that he pointed up were your seven principles. You alluded to some of that just now, uh, Winston, and I'm sure uh, in your everyday conversation here you wind up alluding to those principles without even realizing it. Uh, safety is first and foremost. I don't think we need to talk about safety here guys i mean if we do by at this point what's the point you know uh we we know that but the the thing that you alluded to just uh, obliquely winston is trust um and and that is a i think that trust is even a foundation for safety itself because you have to trust the equipment that you're driving to be to be safe uh you have to trust the technology but then you have to that's, that, that's one thing, but then on the human side of the equation, you have to trust the people that you're working with. You know, when you're out there working tires and those things are in the cage and you're blow, you know, blowing them up, they could blow up. That's a, that's a dangerous job. So you trust the people out there in the shop that you're working with to train you correctly. Sure, and, uh, you know, Todd even said that everybody, uh, you know, kind of knows their roles and, and it's all one piece of the puzzle. Um, so the trust, you know, the mechanics working on your truck, trusting that the truck's fixed right, so when you're going down the road, it's going to operate safely. Trusting that um, you know dispatch is dispatching you on a safe load, or um, you know, and it, all those pieces of the puzzle. Um, we rely on each other, and nobody is uh, uh, can do their job without everybody else working as a team. The Interstate 80 between here and Des Moines is a beautiful. I'm at Des Moines. Uh, Omaha is a beautiful highway, um, well maintained, well designed. It's wide, you know, even three lanes all the way across, so down from six lanes, but you know, three lanes all the way across. Uh, my point being is that infrastructure has got to play into probably a daily conversation with you guys here. Um, Obviously, uh, to talk about the future of trucking, we have to talk about the future of infrastructure because without it, uh, where do we? We can't do what Todd Sanning does and jump on a, a mountain bike and start uh, rolling over trails out in Colorado someplace. We're on the roads. Um, the equipment uh, has to be up to the challenge of the infrastructure uh, constrictions and also the congestion that we have. What, what is part of your day-to-day conversation here at Crete in terms of uh, what the future of the, not just the company but the industry at large looks like? Well, Dave, I think we, we look at the things that we can control 
and we certainly need to be in tune with those things we can't control and, and adapt accordingly. But nonetheless, when we focus on the things we control, it's it's just tremendous amount of opportunity. Um, certainly, there's challenges, headwinds that, that we face, but nonetheless, at the end of the day, we see far more opportunities to serve our customers, to hire the best drivers, the best associates on our team, and 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 take advantage of the growth that's going to be there. And so, we think we're well positioned. The last 50 years have been great, but we really think the next 50 years are going to be even better, and we're very excited for that uh, to to take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, that, that we know are out there. Do you um, work, um, I'm sure you do, but, um, and, and I, this is not a political question, but um, most uh, companies, most of the trucking organizations now are really working with uh, not so much the federal, but the state uh, governments now, uh, the governor's offices to uh, make them understand what's going on out there. Uh, all of the numbers point to like a tripling of uh, commerce on the roads uh, by 2040. I mean, you've seen all of those numbers. We have uh, the Suez Canal opening up. We have the Panama Canal ready to go with the Panamax from Houston all the way around the Gulf, all the way up to Maine of uh, the Atlantic seaboard. Ports are about to explode. Um, how is trucking going to fit those challenges uh, in terms of the infrastructure itself and, and the constrictions that trucking is under at this point? Yeah. Well, it, it'll be a challenge. And I, I had a very unique opportunity last week, um, along with a group of other business leaders, to spend a couple of hours with Donald Trump. And at the top of that list was the need for improved infrastructure and, and to support the growth of the country, to support its, its key to uh, national defense, our economy, safety, so many ways. And, and, uh, and so it was a very opportunistic time to, to share with, with Donald Trump and other leaders just that need for infrastructure to, to sustain us and keep us going forward. Yeah, um, and and again, going to the world view because uh, a, a, a lot of what trucking hauls in this country uh, hits the ports and comes from overseas. Uh, they're building roads in India uh, like crazy. Uh, China is going nuts with uh, building out what we did back in the late, fi- you know, beginning in the late fifties, and uh, we just kind of, uh, I guess, we kind of took our eye off the ball. Do you think? Well, it's it's hard when there's so many demands on on finances if you're not making continual investments and things like infrastructure not only to to grow but to take care of the existing the repairs and maintenance on the roads the bridges etc it 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 becomes something you just can't take your eye off of and you got to have the funding to to support that as well so um it, it is a challenge be, having said all of that, we still have trucks out there on the roads. Whatever the roads look like or wherever they lead, they have to be as safe as possible. Um, the challenges, I don't know if you can, and, and I guess you can, but in today's uh, the landscape of, of the road system and, and the traffic that's out there, uh, with as many people out there and individual cars, and, all, and they're all trying to get to someplace real fast, uh, the technology that you guys incorporate into the trucks, that's well-researched and, 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 and now well-documented, and fuel savings, too. Uh, that's a never-ending quest, I would imagine, to kind of continue to tweak uh, and at this point, I guess you're tweaking when it comes to safety and, and, yeah. and fuel economy. You know, Dave, all that technology is so important, and, and we um, we continue to invest in that technology. But make no mistake, the most important technology on the road is that professional driver behind the wheel. Um, technology can't produce a great driver. Technology only helps great drivers be even better. And so I, I think it's just really important that we never take our eye off the ball, that hiring the best drivers, taking care of them, is probably the single most important thing we do every day. As I said, technology, whether it be here in the office or out on the road, technology is only a tool that helps great people be even more successful. And so I just think the driver is the most important integration, integral part in the trucking industry. 
Here, here. <laughs> uh, Tom, thank you so much for having us here and, and making us part of your 50th anniversary, as we said earlier. Except for that one lady, it's a once-in-a-lifetime event. Congratulations and uh, continued success moving forward. Yeah, thanks, David. As I said earlier, it's an honor having a legend like you here to broadcast live, and it's certainly nice to have Winston here by my side sharing in this moment, too, as we transition to the next generation as well so thank you indeed and winston thanks for being with us here and again thanks for the hospitality no problem i enjoyed it thanks and uh ton and winston ostergaard and want to thank uh, all of the folks who joined us here on the program this morning uh tim ashoff and ryan ellington deb malloy and morris Sims. that was a great conversation i know that you you heard a little bit of that ton uh earlier yeah they morris go. is a morris is a dear friend and and someone we're very proud of Chris Hilkeman uh, with us and Lori Hansen and uh, Michael Burns at the controls and uh, Roosters back at the studio. So we're going to wrap up things here from uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, celebrating the uh, 50th anniversary. Uh, between here and uh, Baton Rouge over the next couple of days, uh, that first 50th anniversary truck will be on the road, Tom. That's got to be exciting. Yeah, it sure is. Sure is. And uh, very proud of Morris, and, and it's great to that that's hauling that first load of Alpo, which is really now Nestle Pet Care. Mm -hmm. Alpo was purchased by Nestle Pet Care, so that load is on its way. I'm sure you're going to see a lot of Facebook photos of that show on the way down to Baton Rouge. Yep. Yeah, indeed. Well, we will uh, see everybody back from, uh, well, in my case, New Orleans, and for Michael's case, uh, Ocean Springs tomorrow morning. So we're going to wrap up things here from Lincoln, Nebraska at Creek Carrier. This is Dave Nemo. Have a wonderful day.